Fred Film Radio. I'm Matt Micucci from the 2019 uh, BFI London Film Festival, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Borat. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> uh, director of House of Hummingbird, uh, a fantastic film, a, a very you know emotional journey um, that is presented here at the festival. But for the benefit of the listeners who are not familiar with the film, I was just wondering whether you'd be so kind as to maybe say a few words to just introduce it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, House of Hummingbird is a film about uh, 14-year-old old girl's in his coming of age. And also she, you know, meets a lot of people and find who she is by meeting people and feeling like sorrow from the relationship. Um, and the film deals with 90s soul and the society and the gender inequality and political so- uh, situation and education pressure and dealing with so many issues. But like the film is about love. Mm. And how much of this uh, is sort of your story as well? Mm-hmm. Well, I get that same question a lot, but I would say, you know, all the artists, they want to make their arts something personal from their very deep side. And I, I would say yes and no. This is very personal, yes, but this is also very fictional. So I try my best to put my true emotions that I felt really deeply when I was an uh, adolescent. But at the same time, it's a fictional structure and fictional screenplay that I put so much effort to make good structure throughout like five years of writing. Oh, it took you five years to make this movie? Uh, actually, it's, it took six years to make this film. It's quite a commitment, right? It's a, almost a labor of love in that sense. Mm, exactly. And during that time, you're, you're trying to keep a balance between maybe going too personal. Mm-hmm. Is that how I understood it? Going too personal and keeping a distance? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I try my best to have healthy distance from myself to the script so that I can make this script into collective uh, story, not just my story, because if I didn't have healthy distance from the script and story, then this film might have been like really sentimental and like tear jerking. But I didn't want to make that sort of film, so I try my best to, you know, remove myself and like try to bring other story into my film so that people can feel relate to all the characters and the story. But I'm curious as to why. Um, this uh, film, you decided to set it in in the early 90s or so. Am I correct in saying that it's set in the early 90s? Yeah, yeah. Um, the year 1994, which is the year of the film, is very important year in Korea because that year, Songsu Bridge collapsed, and there was a like, huge disaster, and a, a lot of people died from the accident, and that was a like, wake up call for our country because. Back then, 90s, my country wasn't a developed country, and so whole country was like really trying their best to make the country to be a developed country. So they be- built everything so fast, and then the bridge collapsed, and then the next year, uh, Sampung department store collapsed. Within two years, we lost so many people from the uh, collapse. And then that was kind of, uh, you know, wake up call for us to be really aware of what it means to be human beings. And we have to really think about safety and human beings, not just development. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible when tragedies like that happen out of the blue. But it's interesting what you're saying because given the specificity of the year in which the film is based, that makes me think that the historical context is also very important to you then, right? Yeah. And is there for, is there a reason, is there a specific reason then for the fact that the lead character of this, of this film is a young girl? Yeah. It is. There is. There are a lot of reasons that I made this younger as main character. I actually had a conversation with Alison Bechdel. Do you know the graphic novelist? Uh, no, I'm not familiar. She made Bechdel test. Mm. Um, the, the test is that, you know, uh, how to figure out whether this is film is like feminism film or like female driven film. Like, uh-huh. like that. It's very famous. Test, but it's, it, that test is made by the graphic, famous graphic novelist Alison Bechtel, and I had a conversation with her after Tribeca premiere, um, and she said, 
she never she barely saw film about a young girl and then the film depicts the young girl as if she's a hero mm. and she said it's very rare to see a film like that because a lot of films are more about May especially mm. white May who are in 20 or 30s so I try my best to depict minority and like a, 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 a woman or a girl who is not respected enough from the society and I wanted to give like spotlight for her because her life might be seen as like you know just like random teenage girl story but I wanted to highlight that everyone's life is very important and like no matter how old you are like 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 where you're from like the life is very important for everyone so I wanted to focus on that does it make sense I, I, I yes it does and I'm I, I agree with you for mm -hmm. sure and so I mean was that or in the back of your mind the whole time that you perhaps wanted to make something that was more female driven were you thinking of that were you aware of that while you were making the movie or is it something that you realized after mm -hmm. the film was finished watching it maybe for the main character, I wanted to depict a uh, little uh, 14 years girl's uh, coming of age, uh, especially because that period is like the first period in Korea that you kind of feel pressure from society, from like school, from society. You got to learn how to be, you know, successful. Like you get this pressure from school that you have to go to Seoul University and like do better to have a happy life. That's sort of like social norm. You learn it from middle school. We learned it from middle school. So that in that element, I intended it, but like in terms of a lot of female characters in my film, I didn't, I wasn't really aware of it until I finished it. And then I was so surprised by the audience reaction that they saw this film as a feminist film and they were so happy with, you know, a lot of uh, realistic female characters from my film. But like, I would say, I'm always inspired by women in my life and I think I apply that sort of my reality to film in a very natural way without really thinking or in without having like so much strong intention yeah uh, when you were about the age of the lead character mm -hmm. in your movie mm -hmm. were there any women that you look up looked up to or did you feel like you were getting a proper representation of your age being a young girl Um, there, of course, there was a woman that I really respected. Uh, actually, the Chinese teacher was... I had this Chinese teacher in, in my middle school. Like, uh, she was actually like the character Yangji. Um, I really liked her because she treated us, me and my friend who were in the Chinese cram school, uh, as human beings, not as little girls. Yeah. Uh, she just treated us as adults, as a, another human being. I could feel it, so I really liked her. And then, but like outside of her, um, I felt uh, I didn't really feel like society respected teenage girls. Yes. Yeah. You felt that society didn't respect that. Was there anything that made you? It sometimes I feel like it's not even easy to awaken to that fact. I mean, maybe uh, young ladies, young girls, uh, f struggle to even realize that right. there is a life that could be beyond mm -hmm. what they're taught. And right. you know, I guess I was very sensitive, uh, even from middle school, and I kind of knew that this is not right. I mean, like I, like the scene from my film that the teacher say you have to go to Seoul University and like that sort of pressure. It was much worse <laughs> than the film in my real life in my school, and then I thought this is not right. This is something that I don't want in my life, and I think because I was sensitive, and I read a lot, a lot of I read a lot of books from from like elementary school and that was like my one hobby <laughs> that I could survive from life I think so yeah uh, 
Well, I I actually went through some sort of the same thing. Uh, books really helped me, you know, get over a couple of problems in my life and just the feeling of being an outsider at all times, you know. But it's interesting that you bring that up because I know that we swayed away from the film a little bit and talked about other things, which is very interesting. But as a final question, I do feel like your film, another great thing about it is that it doesn't have a, a defined structure with the beginning, middle, and end. Yes, it does have a story that runs throughout, but it's not like just about one thing. It does feel very novelistic. It feels like there's many things happening, and sometimes it feels like you're flicking through a book, if that makes sense. I mean, would you agree with that reading of the film? And yeah, actually, I get the same comment a lot from critique, uh, and I like that. I like that comment because I like novel, and I think I try. Sometimes I try to see life as if I'm reading novel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but why then? Okay, so this definitely a question. But why then not become a writer? Why become a, a filmmaker? Mm, good question. <laughs> Maybe I'm like too greedy. <laughs> I want to write and I want to yeah. bring music to my film and I want to storyboard. I like I like to have all the elements into film. Uh, yeah. Do you make did you make the music for this film no, too? No, no, I, that's the part course, that's missing. <laughs> uh, of course, I uh, hired a really, really brilliant composer, and sh he did a really great job. But I think I like to do this orchestration, orchestrating uh, for film, and you know, I can be writer, and I can be a storyboard artist, and I can be a, like some kind of music yeah. geek. <laughs> There's a lot of arts coming together right. in cinema, so yeah. that allows it. Thank you very much for joining us. It was such a great pleasure meeting you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And this is Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider.